Hi, this few weeks I was focusing not just on my game, but a game jam as well. Some of you may know that GMTK game jam was held last weekend and I thought that I could join. I wanted some new experience and this was actually my second game jam ever. I wasn't really confident doing this alone, so I have found a team. There were six members and my role was a 3D artist. That's right, we made a 3D game. Everything was done in 48 hours including code, music and 3D models. The game is fairly simple, you dive down as a skydiver and your goal is to hit the target at the bottom. It is a lot harder than it looks because there are a lot of obstacles. Even if you don't hit the target, you still receive some points for hitting the obstacles. We wanted to make it as simple as possible to be sure we can finish it on time. That's why we chose a low poly style. I made a plane, a character and a land. Making land was really easy. I simply created a plane, subdivided it and added a few noise modifiers. Creating a texture was also very easy. I made a simple gradient map and applied it to my model. This actually took me about 30 minutes and I think it turned out really great. Creating a plane was a bit more difficult. I googled some images to use as a reference and made a simple low poly model that would have a very simple texture just to have different colors on different places. This wasn't a difficult task, but there was a lot of modeling to do. The most difficult model was of course the character. Even though it's a low poly character that I made using some other models as a reference, it was still quite difficult to create a rig for it and animate it. And this model also had a very simple texture as you can see. After I made all the models, I sent them to my teammates and they implemented them very well into the game. It always feels great to see your work become alive. If you want to try it out, you can find it in the link below. And now let's get back to the devlog. Last week I was still polishing the combo system and I think I'm more or less done. One of you actually made a great suggestion to add a screen shake and some kind of a way to make it clear what I am attacking or what I am gathering. So yeah, I made a simple script for the screen shake effect. Not sure if it's good enough, perhaps I will tweak it, but for now I'll stick with it. Also now you can just move your cursor over an object and the name just pops up to tell you what it is and what to do with it. For example, if I point at the board then the name appears and also the name's background is red telling you that you can attack it. And if I point at any kind of a plant, then it will show a name with the neutral blue color signifying that you can pick it up. The other type of information that you can see now is enemy's health bar. At first you don't see it, but when the enemy takes damage the health bar appears that shows how much health is left. I think it also helps to see whether you are successfully attacking or not. Perhaps I should even add an exact number of hit points left. What do you think about it? I'm asking this because I think that there is a limit in the amount of information that is useful for the player. If it's too much, then it might be distracting. The last two upgrades for the game are not combat related. First of all, I made random generated plants on the map. Now, there are a few ways to do that. First is to randomly create them and second that I have chosen is randomly destroying them. I thought that creating objects would also create a lot of problems for me because I have to check the place where the object is created. It cannot appear in the middle of the lake or trees, right? Some of them also have characteristics to be near specific places. For example, these mushrooms are most likely to appear near a source of water. So, writing a code that would also consider this is very difficult to me. So instead I have placed a bunch of plants all around the map and some of them near the ponds and just created a simple script where I can modify the chance for them to exist in play mode. If an object has 30% to exist, then there is a 70% chance for it to be destroyed whenever the map is loaded. I made this randomness in order for the player to look for what he needs. If he would simply know the exact location of the item that he is looking for, then it would become boring over time. 
So anyway, having this feature greatly increases the fun experience because you never know what you might find and where you might find it. The last upgrade that I have implemented was a continuous movement while the mouse is pressed. This was also very simple to do and I can't believe I haven't done this earlier because it makes the controls so much more comfortable now. And as you can see there is no movement lag when changing location, everything looks very smooth. So now exploring the world is very fast and easy. Anyway that's it for this devlog. Next week I should finally add some new enemies. I already have a wolf model and a hair model and all I need to do now is make some animations for them. Implementing an AI script will be easy since I already have it prepared. If you have any suggestions leave them in the comments below and if you like the progress then smash subscribe, notifications bell and a like button like this guy did. Thanks a lot and see you next time.